yeah, thank you for coming. Basically, I'm a freelance cameraman. I work as a shooting PD as well. Probably freelance for about 12 years now, maybe a bit more. Um, the times before that was probably the times I didn't care to think about when you're all doing the freebies and the networking and, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I shoot a lot of news, a lot of documentaries. Uh, covered all like the flooding in the UK, fires, that kind of stuff. Also do a lot of like master interviews for Netflix docs and um, yeah, bits and pieces. Work a lot of corporate stuff, a lot of branded, a lot of commercial. The more varied, the better. I kind of think within the freelance world, isn't you not tying yourself into kind of one one thing. Um, out of interest, who here is kind of just starting their journey in the freelancing world? Good. Yeah, it's not easy to get into. It's a lot easier these days than it was when I was first starting out. Now everything is kind of there online, which is amazing. Um, it used to be the old door knocking situation, handing CVs out when I was starting out, and it was not very nice. Um, but the good thing is for you guys, it's a lot more accessible now, which is amazing. Um, you know, the fact that you can go online onto a lot of Facebook pages, which I'll get to in a bit you can readily access a lot of job posts from the actual people who are recruiting those posts. You get direct email addresses where you can literally ping them an email um, rather than it just going to an inbox of a company somewhere that gets lost and you never hear back. <coughs> you can see someone who's actually looking to hire for those jobs. Uh, TV's a funny one. It's been a quiet old year in broadcast for a lot of people, especially freelance. Um, I think a lot of people kind of egg themselves into one box I think the, the key is to having quite a few variety of, you know, uh, aspects that you can go into rather than just settling yourself into one thing. Um, and I would say the one main key piece of advice that I give to anyone is just stay on radars. You, you're just making yourself be aware that you're out and about, no matter what it is. You know, um, you work with a lot of people that might not have heard from you in a while. If you're just pinging up on social media, they might just say, oh, I wonder what Ed, Ed's up to these days, and they'll, they'll just see you and be like, "Yep, I need that guy for whatever that might be." Or, you know, it's, it's just about keeping yourself out there in this world of of the freelance media, which is, you know, you're easily forgotten. You know, you're just a, a bit of a head to somebody else. But it's 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 quite it's, it's really draining doing it. You feel like you're a bloody social media marketing person, but it's like probably the most important thing to do, whether you're just logging on to Instagram and just liking people's photos or whatever it is, or just you're in Facebook groups or attending amazing events like this, just chatting to people. Um, you're, you're in the community of where you are and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's, it's as more of that you can do as, as physically possible is, is the best thing. All it takes is, like I say, just someone to pop up that is rec recruiting for something at that time. It's, um, you know, it's, it's great. The fact that you're not, you know, during the quiet times as well, which I was saying before, I don't know if everyone's had a quiet year this year. It's not been great for a lot of people. It's good to remain proactive. I was speaking to a few guys before, they're saying that, you know, it's a good time to do all the admin, lame stuff like show reels and websites and, and that kind of thing. The busy times do come back. You know, you've got to have those. those. Of course, please. I think if you're doing it within the right realms, if you're constantly bugging someone to hire you, then you, b you might become a pest. But if you're just making it aware that you're out there, like this is, you know, I've, might, I've been doing this today, I've been working on my reel today, I've been doing this, or someone might be posting about things. And, you know, you, there's, there's obviously a line, you don't want to be pinging at someone every day. But I think as long as you're smart about it, people will respect it, people will be aware that you're in that community. Like, for example, um, I don't know, I've, I've got my eyes on quite a few social media things. If I saw that yourself was doing some interesting things, I'd be like, oh, who's that guy? What's he do? And then, you know, that's in my mind then. If I'm hiring you or not, if someone says to me, oh, do you know anyone else who's, a, I don't know, out of interest, what is it you do out of interest? Okay, yeah, great. Okay, but for example, if anyone said to me, do you know any good prop guys in Manchester? I'd know maybe two or three, but if I saw you come up on some social media of mine, there you go. This is it. There you go. You say you're becoming a pest. You've just done it. There you go. You've done it. Yeah, there you go. You're in the right place at the right time. And if someone said to me, do you know any prop guys? There, done. That's it. You've done it. Yeah, there you go. That's it. 
And uh, again, that leads on to like the big, probably the second biggest piece of advice I could ever give, and I will say this to everyone: is you don't ask, you don't get. Be cheeky. Like you, you've just done it, you proved it. You know, your colleague next to you could do the same thing. Like you never know where those will lead. All that someone can say is, "No, sorry, I'm not after that." But you know, it, even if you're on a shoot with something and someone's doing something you like, oh, what would be the odds of just coming on next time and just having a look or shadowing you on that? Next time they take you on, they may, might realise that yeah, you're good at what whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, and it's all about building those reliable network of people that you can get. Finding the reliable people is probably the hardest thing that you can do. Um, you know, I know a million camera guys in Manchester, but probably a handful that I would trust to go out on a job for me. Or if one of my clients said, you know, you're not available, but who could, who could you recommend? I'm not just going to send out Matt on a job, because I don't know that Matt can switch camera on. But I know that, let's say I've worked with yourself loads, great. I'll send him out on a job for me because it's my reputation at the end of the day that's going to come back. So building those, you know, the, the networks with people who you, who you can rely on and that you're confident enough to send out on behalf of you is 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 great. You know, and that works both ways. You know, you you'll be that reliable person, to someone else, and those pools of people that you get, they're all just feeding down to you. You're here, and these pools of c companies or freelancers or whatever it is, they're all finding the work for you. You're here. And if you're reliable, then you know, they're all ticking over getting the work. They need somebody who, who they're going to give you a shout to, the, the reliable people. You know, they're not just going to go on LinkedIn and type in cameraman Manchester or props master Manchester or whatever it is. They, they want to hire someone that they can trust, that they know can do the job. You know, and it's, it's about becoming that person, really, like developing trust and relationships. It's not the easiest thing. Again, it's, you, know, you don't want to feel like you're a pest by hounding people and whatnot, but... You know, it's 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 not easy finding the work, but once you kind of have built your relationships up, they, they it it sounds arrogant, but you you find that work kind of trickles down to you. Then, you know, you're not waiting for the phone to ring because which is ridiculous. You're always going to have the quiet times, um, but it, once you've built and set yourself up those relationships, you've got a core set of clients who are going to come back to you time and time again because you're their guy, and I think that's that's kind of what it's all about. Um, out of interest, please don't be shy. Who's had a quiet year? It's been rough out there. I know a lot of people, I know some people that have not worked this year. Um, and it's, it's not easy. Freelancing is feast or famine a lot of the time. You know, you, you, you can kind of get yourself in this trap of having a quiet period and then being like, I need to work, I need to work. And then you have a really busy period and you're burning yourself out and you're like, Phew. and then the quiet period comes again and you just think, I need to work. I need to work and you have no time for yourself it's once you get to the point where you have a bit of confidence that the busy time will come back great but during those quiet times if you're if you've gone past the point of where the work really isn't coming then it's time to be a little bit proactive about it but th it's nice or it's sensible to have a little bit of confidence that the work will come back i think a lot of people i know get too caught up in that mindset of work 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 and then there's no family life no downtime and then what you're working for. I understand like if, you, if you're quiet, you're quiet. You've got to do what you've got to do. Um, a lot of people pen themselves into a box of just doing a certain thing, waiting for the phone to ring. It's, it's not going to happen. If you're, I don't know, so let's say you're a shooting PD and you want to wait for a six month long project on a documentary, that's what you do. And it's a quiet time in TV. Everyone is probably after those contracts. You know, you kind of need to think outside the box a little bit. Do I just send myself out as a freelance camera guy? Do I assist on some stuff? Do I do some corporate stuff? Do I do some events? You know, there's a, there's a lot of event kind of work out there. Um, it's not, obviously, it might not be the stuff that you do every day. It might not be the stuff that you want to spend your life doing. But that work is there. It's always going to be there. Having that element in your um, job arsenal is great because that it's always going to be ticking over. TV stuff is there. You know, whatever, whatever it is, different aspects. Again, it's kind of like those pools. They're always on different schedules and they're always feeding into you know, this realm of if you've got a quiet period in TV, the events guys might be busy, broadcast commercial stuff might be busy, branded stuff would be busy, whatever it is. Um, I, I like to put myself into loads of different kind of areas of work and fields of work, you know. Do, even doing stuff like this, you might be filming talks, whatever it is. Um, if you can offer yourself as that, that work's always going to be there in, in, in 
you know, times a year. I um, know this is quite specific to camera work. I'm not assuming everyone here is a camera operator. Um, yeah, I'm going to go through a few things on this laptop here of kind of how I, things that I recommend. Um, out of interest, is anyone not from the north here? Is anyone based down south? Okay, just a few of you. This is quite north orientated, so I'm kind of glad that not too many people put their hand up. Um, is that a screen? It is. So this is probably whenever I get a lot of people asking me where I find a lot of work, um, this is kind of like the first thing that I will recommend. If you aren't part of this Facebook page, get on it today instantly. This is called TV Talent North. Uh, this is a Facebook page and every single day there's, I don't know, 20 job posts. A lot of them might not be for you. Here you've got like studio researcher. I'm not a researcher. That's not for me. You scroll down. What else have we got? Third ADs. We've got um, junior production managers, blah, 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 producers. Um, blah, blah, blah. What else have we got? Production execs. Okay, that's not for me. I'll keep scrolling. These are all in the same same sort of time frame, past couple of days. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got? Researchers. Uh, 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 uh. It's, uh, yeah, it's, there's, there's all sorts on it, it it's, and it gets updated every single day. Story producers, system producers, whatever it is. Um, there will be a million shooting PD jobs that come up on air, or DV directors if, you, if you're if hungry for the work, whatever it is. Uh, boom ops. Um, yeah, highly recommend keeping tabs on this. Another one that I highly recommend is, this is another one. People in TV available. Uh, again, here you go. You might get a lot of people posting CVs because it's quiet at the minute, but there will be jobs that come on there. Um, yeah, make a note of that. It's, it's another great one. And there's another one called Freelancing. There's a, there's a million of them. Northern Freelance TV production staff is a great one. Um, yeah, we're looking for assistant producers. We're looking for researchers, blah, blah, blah. Casting APs. Um, but yeah, these are all in the past few days. Every, every single day, stuff gets put on it. And also, it's it's great because it's whoever it is will be um, posting on there. Chances are they gi they will give you a direct email. Sound record is needed. Blah blah blah. Who's this? Let's have a look. And you get someone's direct email address. And let's say that job isn't quite right for you, but it's in the rough area. Give that person an email and say, hey, I saw you post in this group that you were looking for soundies. Um, I'm a sound trainee, I'd love to step up. It'd be great if I could come on set and shadow you. I know if I got that email from someone, I'd be like, yeah, cool, come down, it's, it's, it's no hassle. And then you've, you've built a contact literally like out of nowhere. Um, the same, there's, there's so many camera stuff that gets posted on here. Um, I'll happily put these on, is there a way of putting these online afterwards or? Or maybe like ping me, uh, uh, yeah, okay. We'll put all these online afterwards so you can find them. Um, thanks, Anthony. I knew someone was going to beat the system. It was going to be something. Um, yeah, afterwards as well, I'll put up like my LinkedIn and my Insta. If anyone has any questions or any want to know about things, just ping me a message. I'll happily oblige to get back to you. Um, another one is UK TV and film, loving your work. There, there is so many of these, honestly, I can't even. And, and again, it goes back to like when I was starting out, none of this stuff existed at all. None of it. And to have this stuff at your fingertips is, is amazing. Um, not just Facebook ones. Let me check this one out for you. Max, let's give you those. Production base. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. This one is really good. Um, I'm not logged in on here, but um, it has a jobs page. So this has both. So you can be, uh, so I'm not paid on this. I have a free version. And you create yourself a little profile, blah, 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 what, you do whatever you do. You write a little blurb, you give yourself credits. Um, you go to the jobs board. Again, there'll be a load of nonsense on there that I'm not going to get. But then here you go, look, here, what's this? DV director or shooting PD. Um, if I'm quiet, I know this is in Bristol, it's not quite where I am, but fine. Jobs from the 30th of June up to July, all the way through July. Um, I'm not a DV director, I, I, but if I'm quiet, I will happily apply for that role, no doubt. I did a, in fact, I did a long stint of that just after COVID. 
I did a load of DVD out until I'm four in a bed. Um, and I found that on here. Literally this this, this way. Um, and again, you get like a direct email address to someone on there. Um, and there will be a million of these jobs. You know, there's pages and pages and pages of this stuff. And it's, you know, what's this? Junior camera operator. Some of them might be lo more long term. Um, it's it's really good. And like I said, I, I don't have a paid profile on here. This is, y it takes you five minutes to set up a little um, profile. Like you're making a little Facebook profile. You put your CV on there. You can put your show reel on there. Um, you can sift through job types, blah, blah, blah. But if you keep it open, you get stuff that you might not think you want to apply for, but actually is a little hidden gem. And again, you can get in touch with people on there. Um, another one that I highly rate is the talent manager. I don't know if anyone knows that. This one's quite good. This one, I think you get a few more perks if you are on the paid subscription. Again, it's very similar. You have the jobs board here. You get loads of jobs on there. Very similar to production base. There's probably more local TV ones in this than there is on production base. I feel like talent manager, a lot of people use on there to have as their TV CV, if you like. Um, but you always see on those Facebook pages, people will post their talent manager profile as their CV if you like so people can go on there it's a place it's like it's almost like a little mini website for yourself um, it's again if you're not part of that please I highly recommend getting on it um, I think it's it's kind of like the old days of Mandy but a bit better if you pay for your thing you get boosted up the CV profile I didn't think it would be worth it but I've had probably about 10 um, job requests on there are you free for this block and it'll be good tv stuff you know it'll be like um documentaries had an amazon prime documentary hit me up through there um which ended up being like one of the coolest things i've ever done and that was just random like, that was my cv's just sat on there i think it cost like 10 quid a month or something stupid like that which is lame but then that 10 quid a month if you're getting a day rate off one job in over however many months you know it, it ends up paying off and again you know people will search in areas for PDs or camera crew or soundies and it will pop up Manchester your name will be on there just because of that picks up the hashtags of your name in that area of whatever they're looking for and I think that's how I've been found on there a few times um, it's, it's worth its weight in gold I can't recommend it enough um, and again even if you're not actively looking for jobs on there um, people can find you on there if you know if you've not got time for it or whatever it's just there sat ticking away which is you know which is great um, it might not suit everyone's way of working, um, especially if you're doing stuff outside of just broadcast TV. I think TV talent, uh, that one is just broadcast TV, but, you know, again, it's cool. Like I said before, I, I like to split my kind of working life over corporate broadcast, commercial and stuff, and then they're all um, different kind of, you know, I'm not putting myself in one box of waiting for TV jobs to come in. You know, I'll do a lot of TV, but it won't just be that that I do. Um, and I think, you know, it's quite important to do that. Um, out of interest, is ev does everyone here just do TV or is, are we a mixed bag or are we just kind of, we all a mixed bag? Yeah, no, that's good. Of course, please. Yep. So the first thing you do is you go into the TV Talent North Facebook page like that and you look for anything that's camera related in TV and you say exactly what you just said to me. Hello, I do loads of stuff. I'm experienced in whatever cameras you use, XXXXX. I'd love to get involved and do some TV. Can I come and shadow and see what it's about? You build a contact, you know, or even if you say, we, hate, we all hate doing it, but can I come and assist on this job for free? And then you've got an assist credit in, on, a TV on a TV show under your belt can I come back next time? Do, I'll do the same again, you know. And then it, uh, that person there, if they need a camera assist, they're going to come back to you um, if they think that you, you know. And it, it's kind of it sucks, but it's kind of building that way up, you know. I, I do a lot of corporate stuff, and it's you know when you bridge that gap, you'll find that once you're in, it's it's, it's that classic thing is once you're in, you're in. But as an outsider, it's it's not easy to get into. It's probably the most clicky industry to get into, 
you know, and it's, it's not, not easy. But now, like I said, it's so much more accessible, it's ridiculous. You know, 10, 15 years ago when I was probably like, it's, it's hard. You, there's no way of getting in. But now with all these email addresses, direct people saying, hey, we do this, we do that, even if it's not the right job for you, like, what have you got to lose by saying, can I come down to this? You know, it's, um, it's, it's crazy how accessible it is. You know, there's the twi you'll see Twitter jobs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just, you've got nothing to lose, basically, really, with, with asking stuff like that. But yeah, great, great question. Um, yeah, I think just after today, just everyone who isn't on those things, please just look at them all and, you know, go, going across to um, working on different kind of stuff. Um, obviously, you've got different pieces of kit that you might use. You know, you might do your event stuff where you're on stuff like, I don't know, you've got a 305 or something down here, a 605. Yeah, doing some bits and pieces, which you'll find will be the classic events kind of camera. Uh, a colleague of mine, Pete, he loves that kind of stuff. Um, but then on like higher end stuff, you use different cameras. But if you get hired to do an event and you don't know how to use like a 605 or a 305 or whatever, um, it's important to know all those kind of, ca I, I'm sorry, this is really camera specific. I'm not meaning to say you're all camera guys here. Um, this is my kind of realm. It, it, to know what is specific to what you're going to be working in, if you're kind of fluent in that, then again, you're becoming that reliant person that can fill all those gaps. Um, so if you end up on an event on a 605 and something goes wrong, oh, I know what that is, I can fix that. Great, yeah, we'll have Ed again on the next one. He knows what, exactly what's going on. Um, same again, I use most of my stuff is on the Canon, uh, Sony FX series, so I shoot a lot on the 6 and the 9. Um, I was very lucky with getting the 6 during its very long backlog order a couple of years ago. And it wasn't really known, I, I don't know if anyone saw my CVP thing, but it wasn't really known in broadcast TV as a camera. It wasn't meant for that at all. Um, and I kind of threw it at live news <laughs> and it kind of got a lot of attention because it wasn't meant for that at all, and it, which was a bit of a road test. But again, it's kind of making work for you what you want to take in. So most of my work, this camera will be fine for that job and it's perfect, you know. But having a good knowledge of a blanket of a kit for what you want to shoot or what you want to be involved in is, is really important. Because if you're going to go and do events, you want to be fluent on them. So older cameras, um, older HXCs and whatever it might be. Or you get asked if you can, you, you know, you might get asked out of the blue, oh, can you come and second on a commercial for us on a Alexa Mini or something. You might not know how to use a camera, but this a really good thing is like rental houses, Shift 4 are here today. They're my go-to guys. Um, if you saw a job come up that wanted a second shooter on a Mi Alexa Mini, you hadn't never touched it, you get on the phone, hey guys, could I have a test day on Alexa Mini? They're going to be fine with that. Of course they are. Um, again, if you're starting out and you don't have any kit, um, don't feel like you can't apply for jobs with kit. Go to sh go whoever it is. In Manchester, there's so many good rental houses. Um, and hire a camera in. You know, you put that on the bill, it's a few hundred quid. If, if, that's gonna, if they can't afford that and you have to take that out of your own pocket to get a job and more work, so be it. I've done that in the past when I started out. I used to hire out loads of cameras and that just comes either out of your pocket on the bill if they can take the hit. Um, you know, you'll find that it's... Having a good relationship with a local rental house is amazing. Um, there's, there's so many good ones in Manchester. Uh, Lens Flare, obviously here as well. <laughs> uh, good guys. Um, and just be, yeah, being on, uh, on point with good camera kit. Because you'll go to production companies you might work with who have a certain kit. And you'll get put back on those jobs with that kit. Knowing that kit is, you know, th they've got peace of mind that you're being hired onto that job with knowledge of that kit which is great, you know, knowing its limitations, knowing its boundaries, problem solving with it is, is great. Um, if you want to buy a kit and build it up, great. T try and figure out what is important to you rather than just buying everything and being out of pocket and like, what the hell have I just done? You know, you can build things up. Um, like I said, I do a lot of live stuff, so even as expensive it is buying a good set of reliable batteries that can last um, a good chunk of time was quite important to me, whereas it might not be important to yourself who does very short f shoots that you can be plugged in in studio, whatever. Um, yeah, build your kit up, build whatever works for you. I think it's about being a bit of a Swiss Army knife when it comes to being sent on shoots. You can kind of, you know, you're, you're a f 
a bit of a mercenary. You can be flown in to do whatever shoot it is that is required for that job. And I quite like that mentality of you're a bit of a specialist. As freelancers, we kind of all are, are that. With the Black Ops, we kind of get flown in, do the mission that's critical, and then get flown out, and everyone else deals with the rest of the shit. And we're kind of just like, yeah, great. Um, in, in fact, like, I, someone sent me this the other day. It was like a, the OG meaning of freelance is like a comes from medieval terms, and it's like a freelance. You're like a knight who gets paid that isn't to any kingdom to go and kill someone, and you're a free guy. And I, I quite like that. You know, we're all like badass black knights that can just go and do a little specific role, and then you know go away. I like that, and with that mentality, it's kind of cool. Um, like I said, the quiet times come. It's going to happen. Just, uh, it's not an easy thing to do when the quiet time comes. But yeah, have have a bit of a, a plan in place for when it does come, please. Ask please, of course. When, uh, about the quiet time will be. Do you reckon it's during the, the winter time over Christmas, or do you reckon it's going to be during the summer? I, I think it very much depends on your your client area. I do a lot of studio stuff and Christmas is like crazy because everyone wants, it's not the Christmas shoots which is crazy, it's the summer shoots. You're doing all the summer stuff at Christmas and everyone's trying to get everything done before everyone breaks for Christmas so it is ridiculous and every year I'm like right I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chill, I'm going to have a nice Christmas I'm gonna and then pff, you work right up to Christmas Eve and it's, it's bonkers but then my quiet time personally is January and February is like go, ghost town and I'm, I'm okay with that because I know it's coming. I know that that time is coming. I'll, I'll try and set some time away, um, try and get a little break in. You know, see, I've got a family. I've got a little two-year-old, so I'll try and see, some, see him and have a bit of time off. I think this year has been slightly different. I think that's kind of followed and carried on quite a lot from everyone that I've known. My March kind of was a bit slow this year. Um, it happens. I think this year has been particularly bad for a lot of people, and I've heard of some people that haven't worked this year at all, and I really feel for them. Um, it, it happens. I, I certainly think the start of the year is always is going to be quiet. You know, unless you have a certain client who works those months, everyone's kind of just ramping up into the year. You know, no one's got the money, the the budgets to spend just yet. There might be certain productions that are shooting over that time, but generally it's kind of the time when you do all the the, the nonsense. I'll do my show reel. I'll do my tax return. I'll do my you know, emails I need to catch up, website, you know, you, you're constantly trying to keep your showreels built up and it's hard, it's not easy, but that's probably the time to do it. Or if you have a quiet time in the middle of the year, great, I'll try and use that time to, to fill those boring things that you're doing, all the admin nonsense that everyone hates doing. Um, you know, it's not, yeah, no one likes doing that crap, but it's... <laughs> Like I said, there's no, you don't, that's the really hard thing about freelance, you don't know when the quiet times are coming, it, it, it happens, it happens to us all man, like, it's not nice. Um, I, yeah, I say January, February is, is usually pretty bleak, um, but it, it, you know, th there's things you can have in place, and also, like I said before, if you, if you get in yourself into a mindset of doing other things, it's kind of good, because that might come in at that time, like, it's, uh, you know, I'll do some stuff that's like live graduation filming. And it's, I do some stuff with a colleague of mine, Pete, over there. It's a bit, you're doing a bit of this, basically. But you might get a block booking of two weeks that comes in when you're really dry. And I used to be really complacent with some jobs like that. And now you just, do you know what? You're like, I will happily do that, you know, when the quieter times come. When you've got those clients, you know, you can keep saying no to them. You can keep saying, no, no, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm too busy, sorry, blah, blah, I can't do that. But when that comes round and you're really thankful for it, you will be so thankful that you've, you know, you've, you've, get, you've kept those bridges sweet, you know. And it's, it's, it's all about that kind of thing, I think. It's, it's having as many eggs in as many baskets, as many pools that are feeding you is, um, is probably the, the key thing, really. It's not, uh, yeah, I th like I said before, I think a lot of people kind of fit themselves into one box and that's all I'm going to do. And I think that's probably the biggest mistake you can make is I'm only going to do this. Um, and I think a lot of people have really struggled this year because of that. They're waiting for, like I said, six-month-long projects of doing a certain thing. If you don't have a, a B plan, 
you know, I know a load of guys this year that are doing like beer deliveries, Amazon driving, or whatever it is, just to, you know, because there's no plan B in place, that's what they've got to do. And it's like my hat is off to them because they're, they're keeping busy when the, the bad times come. You know, being freelance is, it's not for everyone. My, my biggest gripe in freelancing is fighting with a calendar, trying to make certain jobs fit with others, and it's just like, it's probably the hardest thing. You know, you're constantly like, right, okay, this isn't going to quite fit there, and I've got to come straight back from this to go to there, and it, it's, it's a nightmare. But I think, like, if you've got a good calendar set in place, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. The pros outweigh the cons with freelancing massively. You know, you, you're on your own time. You get to go on adventures. You get to travel. You get to be with loads of cool people like yourselves. Um, I think, you know, I, most of my friends are probably people I've met through work on random jobs. Um, even, like, some of the slower corporate jobs you go on, you'll be in a re- you, could be, you could be in a cheese factory and a... a shooting a, chi- being a giant cheese being made and it's like, uh, I don't get to see that normally. You know, we're, we're, we're very lucky in, in fr- the freelance world of like these bonkers jobs that we end up going on. Um, and I think, you know, once we take a step back and realise that we're, we're, we're doing that kind of stuff, it's nice. You know, it's, it's you know, we're not doing manual labour or whatever it is. It's, you know, I know everyone probably does very different things here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I like the freelancing world. I've been freelance for, like I say, about 12 years now. So it's, it's, this is why I also have no hair and a tan. Because I travel a lot, but it's the stress is... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, I, li- I, I don't know. How are, we, how are we on time? Are we okay for a minute? Okay. Just out of interest, who would like to be brave and say... Let's pick on Ant, because I know him. G- give me your pros and cons of being freelance on. What would you say? Yep. Yeah, which is hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it, it happens. You know, it's, we're all victims of making ourselves too busy because we never know when them quiet times are coming. So we soak it all up and we work and work and work and work and work. And then we nearly burn out and then we have a quiet time and then we're like, quick, right, work, 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 work. But obviously there's a fine line of when you are quiet for a couple of weeks, you need to find the work. But again, just keep, even if you, you've got time off, keep an eye on those groups. They're, ama- they're ridiculous. They're so good. Um, I, I honestly can't recommend them enough. It's, it's, it's mad. You know, there's a lot of people in, there's a lot of, Manchester's amazing for networking and job sharing. I think it's probably the most friendly city going for people helping each other out. Um, I've got a lot of freelance colleagues who pass me work, I pass them work. And I've probably seen, Man, 80% probably of my work is from word of mouth of my guys, freelancers, other c- companies. You know, it's, it's crazy. You'll get... The other day I was sat in the office just writing up some invoices. You get a call. What are you doing now? Can you get to, mo- can you get to Old Trafford now to do a live news story? And you're just like... Uh, yeah. And I guess like kind of making yourself this accessible as freelancers is like... Uh, double-edged sword. You know, it's amazing because we get to do cool stuff, but it's like you're constantly on call, kind of. Um, as long as you're aware of that and you're able to kind of say no and switch off a little bit, it's, that's where, when you built yourself up to that point, is is kind of nice and you can kind of switch off a little bit. The danger is not doing that, burning out and just taking everything and everything and everything and everything and then breaking your back. You know, it's, it's Matt looks like a man of experience from that. Yeah, we've we've all we've all been there. Um, it's not nice, but yeah, maybe like I don't know. Does anyone else want to share their pros and cons? What they found? Come on, don't be shy. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pen- penciling is a hard thing. When when someone says, "Can you pencil this week?" and you're like, "Okay, fine," and then it's coming round, it's coming round, and you've got other people asking you for one day in that week, and you're like, 
uh, I've got a pencil that week, and then you might bin that single job off, and then that pencil goes away, and you're just like, it's, it's the worst. What is great for that kind of thing um, is, depending if your client is cool with that, is say your colleague next to you, I don't know if that's actually a colleague of yours, but let's say he does what you do, you trust him, how would you feel about picking up a day on the 23rd for me? I've got this week blocked in. And if your client's cool with that, you know, it works both ways. You're lending your man some work. You're also keeping that week alive. And that work's not going elsewhere to Joe Bloggs from London, who's picking up their contract. Um, yeah, pencils generally suck. That's a good one because that's that's kind of like you've already done the legwork and you've done all you've got all the experience that everyone needs, but not kind of the kudos and the credits of being this reliant freelance guy. Um, I'd probably say like you you have to word your CV carefully. I have all this stuff that I can do. I'm pretty badass, and I work in TV. But you you kind of have to word it like. I've camera assisted on this and th rather than being like yeah I'm kit guy on whatever it is yes I have worked in all these programs as in the camera department um, whatever it is and then yeah I'd like to come and work in um, and again you don't ask you don't get be cheeky with it like massively um, big yourself up uh, you know tenfold like I say you've done all, you've done all the work there um, but the hardest thing is when you haven't done all that and then you were trying to go into it is that's the real struggle. The fact that you know all that is amazing. You know, you c you could demonstrate that you have done uh, whatever it is. You know, you've operated cameras, you've done, you've set up rigs, you've uh, you know deal dealt with talent on set, blah blah blah. You can write all this down, um, and yeah, it's, it's not easy, but yeah. Yeah, I, th I think so. Massive. I've, I've recently I've seen quite a few camera assisting roles um, popping up in Manchester as well. Like, don't be afraid to to go up a level. Like, go straight into like DV directing or something like that. You know, that's that's kind of like a, a really junior. It's it's not, but it's kind of been seen as a junior camera role. Um, but you're doing everything. A DV director is actually hard graft. You're kind of dealing with talent. You're shooting. You're doing the audio. You're lighting. But the fact that I'm sure you've probably done all that anyway, you can say, yes, I've done that. So if you see a DV director, like on one of the sites that I showed, if you see a DV director role come up, you apply for it. And you might say, um, I've not DV directed directly, but this is what I've done. I'm fluent in cameras. I'm great at dealing with talent, lighting. Um, I feel like this job would be more than capable of doing, blah, blah, blah. If they get back to you and say, sorry, this isn't quite right, you say, okay, great. Keep me on file, please. And then... You've got that person's email. It, it sucks. It's degrading. Create a template of that message, and you can fire it out to as many people rather than sitting there typing up that same thing 50 times. If you've got a little template, hello, I've done this. Blah, 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 blah. You know, again, you don't ask, you don't get. It's it's like the be all and end all. Um, yep. But when, when, whenever you go for that certain role, you craft your CV to that role. So let's say you're an edit producer that can shoot. Yeah. Fine. You see, you want to go. Let, let's go back to that DV directing role. You mould your CV into more camera-related thing, and you say, "I've got great camera skills. Blah blah. I can use XXX cameras. I also can edit. With knowing to edit, I can drive stories really well. And then people love that kind of thing because you're dealing with the talent. You can drive the stories. You know how to shape things." I've got the edit in my mind, so I'm not going to overshoot. I know how to shoot uh, for these stories. People will love that. Again, with like with certain roles that you're going for, you you craft that CV for that. It, it, same goes for myself. If I'm going, if I need to send a CV off for a commercial job, I'm not going to send a CV that is heavily around event, events or um, whatever it might be or live stuff. But like if I'm doing a 
if I'm if someone says, "Oh, we've got a load of event stuff, concerts, multicam concert stuff," I do a lot of that. Um, would you mind pinging a CV over? I'm not going to send them a list of news credits because to them they're like, it makes no sense. You know, I'll put a highlights thing at the top of even if it's six to eight months ago of those specific roles that will apply to that. You know, I've done this concert, blah 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 blah, blah. and then below that, you can put whatever, and it just shows that you're still working. Uh, but yeah, kind of craft it to each each thing. It's it's great having all them skills because then you can you've got a million different skills that you can pluck and pick and you know make into a thing. And also, if someone wants an edit producer, you can just be like, yeah, great. I'm going to interrupt. We're going to run out of time. Last question. It's, again, I think like it depends what kind of thing you're going for, but I, I almost feel like those days are kind of fizzling out a little bit and you're getting direct emails to, it seems to be like production coordinators are hiring on behalf of these more senior roles, senior people in, in studios or broadcasters. Um, the crewing roles kind of seem to be falling on those kind of people. And you'll see in all those groups, it'll be production coordinators that are, that are asking for CVs for shooting PDs or whatever it is or uh, um, and I kind of like the fact that you're getting those direct email addresses rather than jobs at bbc.com or whatever it is it'll be you know someone's direct inbox and I you know I, I, lo I love that fact if you are sending it to a studio per se um, I, I guess it's not easy maybe try and do a bit of groundwork on whoever it is you try and get always try and get a direct name like you know rather than just sending it to a, a, a blanket mailbox because it's just it might fall to a deaf ears. Uh, but yeah, it's not easy doing that, that kind of route. I, I know what you mean. But yeah, keep an eye on those groups.